Hello, Flickering Myth family, and welcome to our channel. My name is EJ Marino, and today we have a new movie review. Yes, we are going to be jumping into the Nick Cage epic called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. You know, sometimes you could be a bit unqualified to see a movie. Let's say you walk into the 18th Marvel movie out of 35 of them. You have no idea the references, the action scenes, the heartbreaking finale. None of it would really connect with you because you're not really fully prepared for the work. That's how I felt walking into the unbearable weight of massive talent. I appreciate Nick Cage. I think he is a fun actor. I like a couple of his movies, and I love that he really loves the art of cinema. But I don't really know all the Nick Cage memes. I haven't seen all his movies, so there's a lot in this movie that did not work for me. That aside, I do think there's a really good idea you can do with a meta Nick Cage movie. We'll talk about that closer to the end of the review. But I'm looking at this movie and I'm going, why did this not work for me? I got enough of the Nick Cage stuff to work, but what was the root of it? And I will say, as a comedy movie, this movie can be a bit weak at times. When it's not focused on Nick Cage, which there's a lot of that, but when it tries to do stuff with the weird like uh, crime element to this, or the CIA stuff, a lot of those jokes don't really land for me. The stuff with like Nick Cage and his family, there's, a, there's an, a root of that that could work as well, but overall, I just don't think this really hit me as hard as it could, but... For diehard Nick Cage fans, there's enough in this that, that it can hold you over for sure. Where I think the last 15-20 minutes can get a bit tiresome, there's a lot in that first little bit that really does stick with you. I could imagine a huge diehard Nick Cage fan going nuts for this, especially when we start seeing some of the weird Nick Cage versus Nick Cage stuff. Oh boy, yeah, that's when this gets really entertaining and really good. But besides that, I do struggle with the comedy aspects of it. There's a lot to this movie that could really, really work. And there's a lot that really couldn't work. It's a bit of a hot and cold kind of film. I want to enjoy it. I want to say I had a great time with it, but I just had a good time and it's okay movie. In The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, Nicolas Cage stars as Nick Cage. He is an actor. We all know who he is, but he's in a weird spot. The roles aren't coming in and he's struggling if he wants to be a movie star or an actor. He is a bit confused, so he takes a weird job of going to work for a rich, like, business dude. He's going to go hang out for him, with him on his birthday. They start connecting, but when we find out that the rich business guy could be a bit of a dirty criminal, this is when the CIA comes involved, and they start going, hey, Nick, I want you to help us out. And that's the basic plot of this movie. That CIA stuff is where this movie starts to get a bit weaker when it's Nick Cage referencing Nick Cage stuff. That first 30 minutes where it's this weird look at Hollywood and what it takes to be Nicolas Cage, I like all that. Then he gets onto the island with Pedro Pascal and it becomes a really cool bromance film. I like that as well. Then the whole like last half of the movie hits and I'm like... I could deal without this, but there's still good moments sprinkled throughout. That's what's really intriguing about all of this. It has a good idea. It has a really good story, and they stretch it out as long as they could. Maybe with a different director, a stronger comedy director, this could feel over-the-top, epic in scope, and really hit you hard for not just Nick Cage fans, for anyone looking for a really fun comedy movie. There is times where meta stuff may not work for you, but you can still enjoy it. Scream is a hugely popular like horror franchise, but I don't think everyone knows every single reference made in those movies. So that's what I'm trying to say here. I think this could be a bit stronger with a, a different director. This feels a bit small scale at times, very TV stuff. There's moments in here that I'm like, so we're just going to kill off a character off screen. So we're just going to do this. It just feels like it didn't hit its full momentum. Like an A plus for effort, but maybe a B minus for execution. Now, I did just mention a change of director could have really helped this film out. Maybe make the comedic bits work a bit more. Maybe make the whole thing flow together as a like standard traditional comedy. Maybe not make those like last 15 feel they go too long. Yeah, all of that could be changed with a different director, but what if you changed the tone of this movie? What if you stripped back the comedy just a bit 
and go for the movie actually that they were pitching in this pedro pascal's character and nick cage uh they're kind of trying to make their own movie yeah what if we actually followed the movie that they were talking about a more serious look at what it takes to be an actor especially in the crazy world of hollywood now I would have really liked that. There is a good conversation between what is an actor and what is a movie star. There's a side of this movie that's pushing Nick Cage to be a movie star, to do the blockbusters, to make all of the money with all of the popular movies. But at times, Nick Cage just wants to make like artful, like intense, good movies driven by characters with good, solid directors. I want that. That's what I that's what's confusing for me. This movie feels like it's fighting itself. It's making fun of things, but then also falling into the tropes that it's making fun of. That's where I get a bit confused with it. Where I think stripping back a lot of the comedic elements and having like focus more heavy on the satire, make fun of how the industry works. There's a lot of it there, but once we start getting to the third act action stuff and trying to figure out if the boss is this boss and who's really evil, that's that's where it gets lost, but I really was intrigued by Metaness. Nick Cage is a figure in Hollywood that has a crazy life, like from a famous family, has done every kind of movie you could possibly do, and is in a weird spot now where he's kind of a meme. I would have liked to see that explored a bit more in a bit more serious direction. I just can't figure out why I think that would be the better outlet for it. Maybe because I'm not the biggest comedy fan and I do feel like this is a flat standard generic comedy that if you take Nick Cage out of it, it just wouldn't be as funny or I don't think people would connect to it. But then I go, but what if this was an intense look at the dark side of Hollywood, how sad it could be to be Nick Cage, but also seeing him grow and have friends and find the true meaning of life. That's there, but it's muddled by so many other things that I just see the potential that's in this movie and I want it to go the extra distance, but what's presented is just okay a comedy like this may not work for everyone and i definitely think this will find its perfect audience people are going to go absolutely nuts for it i can't say i do but i definitely appreciate what they try to do and i think nick cage is a hell of an actor with a lot to say about the industry what he what he just dipped his toe in here I loved. I think he could do more. Maybe write a book, bro. I would read the whole thing because you have a lot to say about a lot of things. Yeah, overall, I thought the movie was okay. I had a decent time with it. I laughed for the first 45 and struggled for the rest, but that's okay. I hope you did enjoy it. If you're a big Nick Cage fan, tell me what's your favorite Nick Cage movie down in the comments below. Did you love this movie? How did it feel to be a Nick Cage fan and let all this meta-ness hit you? If you're not a fan, share that as well. Share all your feelings down in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And don't forget to subscribe to Flickering Myth because we make videos like this every single week. All right, everyone. Let's talk about the unbearable weight of massive talent down below.